Morning, everyone. Welcome to the opening fireside chat at Deal Seat Asia's Asia PUVC Summit. I'm Georgie Philip, the editor and chief and founder at Deal Seat Asia. We kick off our sixth edition of our annual event with Patrick Waluo, co founder, managing partner, and member of the investment committee at North Star Group, which is among the largest uh, regional PE firms in this region. Southeast Asia's internet economy is forecast to triple to about 300 billion by 2025, and more than half of that will come from Indonesia. John Riyadi of Lipo, who joins us on Thursday, shares the view that Indonesia's technology market is at an inflection point and could grow exponentially to reach anywhere between 200 to 300 billion in the next two, three years. That's a 7x growth from where it is today. Patrick and Nordstar, who are early investors in Indonesian Decacon Gojek, are now training their sites on the second wave of digital companies that are emerging in the health tech, ed tech, agri tech, and SaaS sectors. Uh, great to have you join us again, Patrick. And let me start with a big picture question uh, to you first. Uh, what has changed at Nordstar over the last 18 months due to the pandemic? Has the pandemic sort of um, impacted your investment theses, the speed of deal making, or doing deals in other countries? Good morning, Joji. I'm pleased to be here and thank you for having me. Um, we have been focusing on three different, different sectors in the past few years, namely uh, digital financial services and consumer. Um, when the pandemic um, first hit the region, um, we kind of like paused and um, took stock about you know, how things would pan out. Um, and I guess in hindsight, um, we did miss a number of interesting opportunities because we were, as we were assessing the risks um you know we we some some of some of the company we didn't in, we decided not to invest continued to do extremely well right so um one thing that we decided very early during the the the, the crisis is not to stop um our investing um, activities to continue looking at this and these opportunities but we have to move fast and we have to be agile um, because what we have also learned is that there are a lot of uncertainties um, as a result of how the pandemic unfolded um, and we had we had seen ups and downs um, but at the same time uh, what has happened in southeast asia is that um, the ecosystem of um, investors especially in the high growth companies um, whether it's startups or digital had developed tremendously. Um, I, I had a discussion with one of our oldest LPs, um, our longest LPs, um, um, a few days ago, and um, he's based in, in, in North America. And the observation is that finally, the um, investors ecosystem uh, in Southeast Asia is um, coming together. Right? I mean, you 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 see a lot of a lot of activities. This um, also resulted in. Um, and in, in, in a tougher competition for us, more increasing competition. On one hand, the ecosystem being developed is good uh, for the whole industry, but we also have to, to adapt. We have to move faster. Um, we, have to, um, um, we have to make a decision um, and we have to search the, we have to, be, we have to be totally on top of the market. So the, um, you know, in, um, um, there are a lot of things that have changed in the past, in the past 18 months, I would say. Um, and uh, but but I would I would also say that it's um it's getting more exciting than ever. Uh, among the things that have changed, is there been any change in Northstar's fifth fund that you've been raising since last year? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you were targeting to raise about eight hundred million, and how much have you raised so far, and when is the final close expected? So um, the strategy of Fund Five will continue. Um, will continue um, to mimic what we have done with Nostar 4. Um, Nostar 4 has been, um, has been a tremendous success for us. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we, there, there are some spillover to, to Fund 5. So far, we have invested um, in uh, three uh, different situations from Fund 5. Um, last year, together with TPG, we bought um, Greenfields, which is um, um, probably Indonesia's Definitely Indonesia's largest milk producer. Um, we continue our investment in Go Ventures through Fund through Nostar Five, 
And then recently we announced that we made an investment in um, advanced.ai, um, a company that we have been, actually we have been um, backing um, since, um, since they first started. Um, and big part of their business is in Indonesia and we, we've basically been an integral part of the expansion um, in the country. Um, we are um, uh, planning to um, wrap up um, our fundraising in um, end of this year. Um, so far, we have gotten a lot of support from our existing LPs. We have a few new LPs as well. Um, the again, you know, we could, we will continue on investing in high growth um, opportunities um, in Southeast Asia, with Indonesia being our primary focus in uh, three different areas: digital, financial services, and consumer. And does your target still remain 800 million for this fund? Our target, we will, uh, we will. Um, what we are planning to do is to actually have a um, slightly smaller fund. Um, but whereas in fund four, it took us many years to fully invest the fund, uh, we feel that in this um, in fund five, we will have higher velocity of investing, and therefore raise um, subsequent fund uh, faster than what we did before. So it's for for, for us, we believe that. Um, Given the given the nature of um, our investment strategy, uh, focusing on high growth opportunities, um, the velocity of investing is a lot, a lot, a lot, um, a lot better and fit our investors' um, appetite um, uh, better than um, better than having um, a big fund with long investing period. Got it. So does that mean that your uh, ticket sizes will uh, come down? Because typically your ticket size is about twenty million. So with Fund 5, will you do smaller check sizes, uh, especially for tech companies? We are not doing smaller uh, check sizes for the, sec the sake of, um, uh, of putting less capital. <clears throat> uh, what we are doing is that we are willing to put um, smaller check with a view that over time we will be able to deploy more capital as these companies grow. And um, we, had, um, we have been consistent with this strategy um, in Gojek, the investment started with eight hundred thousand dollar of, um, of 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 capital, and then two million, and then over time, um, we deployed over hundred million dollars into into Gojek, a um, lot more than hundred million dollars into into Gojek, and we believe that was the right um, um, strategy given the risk profile, risk reward profile uh, um, of 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 the opportunity. And that's what we are planning to do. I mean, you know, um, um, what we what we learn is that if we stick with large check size, um, by the time these company, these high growth companies are ready to come to the market, um, you know, it's very hard for it's very hard for us to 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 be competitive because we don't have much time to evaluate the opportunities. We don't, uh, we, you know, it's hard to get to know uh, the founder intimate intimately over a short period of time. Um, yeah, so. Um, and, and and we have done this strategy with a fishery with advanced um so that's that's essentially a style of investing that has worked well with us now that you mentioned gojek i uh, just wanted to ask you your you know the they are they've merged with uh, local e-commerce major tokopedia uh, and formed uh, goto and we expect uh, uh, goto sort of to list in the coming uh, sometime early or sometime in sometime next year and that also gives all the investors a potential exit so such big exits will they be a game changer for indonesia startup ecosystem for both investors and the companies oh definitely it's going to be a big um a big game changer i think on the business itself um you know, uh, putting the capital market element out of it um in the short time of um the merger being completed there have been a lot of um, synergies that the comp the two companies have realized. Um, we just had a business review, um, and everybody was pleasantly surprised about how fast um, the company had benefited from um, from the combination. And uh, there will be more. We are just in the <clears throat> we are just in the early days, right? And, um, and this is two um, two big local unicorns um, getting together. Uh, and 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 if if a market holds and we can achieve the valuation um, that we believe is fair, um, this is going to be number three or number four 
largest company in Indonesia by market cap, right? And <clears throat> and the um, the 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 it's also a big changer because the um, the regulators in our market are working are very supportive of our listing. The spirit that um, of which we have been working with the regulator on the stock exchange regulators is that we need to make sure that the Indonesian exchange um, is competitive um, in being able to host companies like us, such that um, those who are listed here are not at disadvantage uh, to companies that, that companies that are listed in other exchanges by virtues of restrictions. Um, so that's. Um, that's that 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 you know um, um, the regulator I believe is in the final uh, process of revising their listing rules, and um, the we believe that it's going to be a game changer because we believe that will make Indonesia a lot more attractive for many more um, high growth companies. Got it. Two things from what you said. Uh, one one was you said if you get a fair valuation, it will be among the top two or three companies in Indonesia. Any ballpark number on what that fair valuation should be? Or, or you know, um, you I, would, I, would, I mean, I, I, I would leave it to the market to determine. Um, you know, I, I don't like to mislead the market by, um, you know, quoting a, quoting a number. But I think it's a, it's a reflection of about of how well the company is doing um, um, the, the underlying performance. And then, you know, people will make their own people will make their own assessment on valuation. Sure. Uh, a related question is also on the IDX because you had mentioned about it that you're in talks with the regulator. Uh, how big do you think the Bukalapak IPO was for, again, for the, for investors and for the ecosystem uh, in Indonesia, especially the response <laughs> to that IPO? Bukalapak, I think, um, announced that they were raising $300 million and they ended up raising $1.5 billion. By any measures, raising $1.5 billion in an IPO is quite significant right, for, for, for any company and especially for a company that is in the um, digital space. It is the first uh, major digital company that gets listed here. At the same time, um, um, Bukalapak got listed on the old listing rules, meaning that they did not request any, um, they did not request any revision to the existing listing rule. Um, so I think Bukalapak, Bukalapak is um, significant. IPO is significant um, in the sense that it shows there's depth, depth in the local capital market to raise um, serious amount of capital. So does that mean that we are now have a situation that with um, increased participation in the capital markets, with that uh, depth in the capital markets, uh, a lot of local unicorns may not necessarily have to sort of go to markets like the U.S. in the future. Um, <clears throat> for 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 Gojek to copy the uh, company we could go to, uh, we plan uh, we plan to uh, do a list the company do 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 a listing, both in the Indonesian stock exchange and in the U.S. Um, because we still feel that it, 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 it's good for us to be able to tap into the depth of the um, of the U.S. market. Um, but I think um, in the context of Southeast Asia, um, Indonesia for Indonesian digital companies are getting very competitive as a listing venue. Um, and um, I believe that the necessity for these companies to go abroad um, is now um, diminished, um, um, relatively speaking, from where where it was before. Yeah, as countries take steps to sort of get their companies to list on the local exchanges, I just want to ask you a big picture question on how you see the series of steps that Singapore has taken recently to get the tech unicorns to list locally. They've also sort of rolled out uh, SPACs on the um, SGX. Uh, will SPACs be something that you are interested in for some of your portfolio companies. Uh, again, big picture, how do you see SPACs as a frenzy died down for good? I think the Singapore Stock Exchange is taking the right steps to make itself more attractive. Um, you know, um, I um, observed that none of the Singapore unicorn is actually listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange. <clears throat> um, 
it is a it is a it is a big um, it is a big a big market um, a big capital market and um, you know um, what they are doing on spec makes a lot of sense and it provides alternative um, for digital companies or high growth companies in uh, in the region um, Indonesia is not the only market there are companies in Singapore in in, in Thailand Vietnam and the Philippines um, that can that can benefit greatly um, from the new Singapore specs. How do you see, see specs overall, Patrick? Uh, the frenzy has sort of died down, but do you think they can, at least for this part of the world, it still makes sense? Um, we were we were offered many times to raise our own specs um, at the height of the frenzy, um, and our we took a view that. Um, you know, for us, we wanted to remain focused on our um, investing strategy and investing style. Um, uh, truth be told, is that even on um, on a structure where we are not getting any promote from the um, from the target companies, if you will, the market is extremely competitive. Um, we understood the we understood the attractiveness of U.S. specs. Um, but we felt that even the size, whereby you know you have to have them, um, you know, it only makes sense if you have at least a company with a billion-dollar valuation. Um, it, it, our view is that it would not have been that 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 easy to dispec um, high-quality companies. Um, <clears throat> so we decided we decided um, to stay to stay on the uh, to stay as a bystander. Um, in the U.S. Um, U.S. spec, but I think Singapore spec is attractive because it also um, it, it it also allows for smaller companies uh, to participate. Um, so that 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 may be a that may be a game changer. Do you think you can you will be uh, interested in doing a spec in Singapore? We are evaluating it at this moment, um, and I think um, if we if we are confident that we can. Um, we can deliver um, to suspect investors. Then you know we may we may do it. Got it. The other thing I wanted to check with you again: what Singapore has done is got its uh, sovereign wealth funds, uh, Tamasek and GIC, to sort of help uh, the local tech companies uh, list with XG, uh, SGX. Do you think Indonesia sovereign wealth fund, which is currently being set up, can play a similar role, or do you think the the country's new sovereign wealth fund should fo focus actually on the big infrastructure projects for what it is being set up. Um, our Indonesian sovereign wealth fund um, is designed to leverage on government's assets to attract more investments into Indonesia, uh, primarily, as you mentioned, uh, on the infrastructure side. <laughs> and it is early days for INA, the, that's the name of our sovereign wealth fund. And I believe that for the next uh, foreseeable future in the foreseeable future they will remain to focus on their on their mandate since you're associated with indonesia sovereign wealth fund any other updates uh that we can have in terms of uh how much they've raised so far deployments and all of that uh the government uh, the government capitalized them with um 1.5 billion dollars i think of capital it was it was made public um, if, um, and um, they they announced that they had um, reached an agreement with um, the government of Abu Dhabi through Adia, I believe, and with um, CDPQ to raise um, toll road fund. Um, that's my that's my understanding. But you know, um, um, my what I know is the same as what the public know in terms of like disclosures. Yeah, thank you. Let me just switch gears, come back to North Star. Uh, you were also very bullish at one point of time in Vietnam. Do you continue to do so or has anything changed? Uh, we continue to be bullish on Vietnam, especially on the digital space, on high growth, on the high growth sectors. Um, we um, recently um, 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 invited um, an old partner to become to, to be running our office there. Um, our investment, um, you know, our recent investment is in a company called Kiki, which is the largest local e-commerce player and is doing extremely well. So, so far we are pleased and we are still um, 
actively looking for more opportunities there. Okay. Along with looking for more opportunities in Vietnam, do you also see Nordstar getting into other areas that other private equity firms have got into, like secondaries, uh, private credit, debt, or even special situations? Uh, that's a very interesting um, question. Um, at the end, it depends on the band strength that we have internally. Um, the team that we have um, are trained um, and basically gain experience in the area that we have been focusing on. And that includes, um, you know, early, early stage investing, um, structured investing. Um, um, but before we decide to go into a new strategy, we need to make sure that we have the um, the right talents um, to support to support that. And if you go into any of these new strategies, will it be through separate vehicles, or you think you can allocate like? Uh, part of your uh, some portions of your next fund to do some of these new strategies if you ever do it we'll probably have to um, raise a new fund because our our fund strategy is pretty specific to what we have been doing um, in most of our discussions we are more focusing on how we can add value rather than how we should be like increasing our offer by another 10 percent or 15 percent to be able to be invited into the game got it so something um, related to what you just said, uh, and it's a, again a big picture question, how do you see many of these global funds who are now increasingly becoming active um, in uh, the whole of Southeast Asia, the A16Zs, uh, the DST, Hedo Sophia's, Tiger, they come in, uh, do DD very quickly, uh, no one really debate on valuations, often don't take a boat seat. So how do local regional funds like you compete with some of these new entrants? I think generally speaking, the more capital there is in the market, um, the better it is. It provides us for, you know, it's part of an ecosystem. Um, um, it provides us a um, path to exit some of our investments. It uh, gives choices for our um, portfolio companies to access more capital. Uh, we are working with a number of them um, and we compare notes, um, we speak with them. Um, we from we can always criticize criticize an investing decision that somebody makes of being reckless or um, overvalued and whatnot. But at the at the end, it's also there's also um, there's also such thing as school fee, right? People may, may people may may make one or two mistakes, but people learn from it and then they adjust their strategies. So all in all, um, overall, we are um, we are happy that there are more bigger players coming to the market. Got it. Sticking to valuations, uh, do, uh, do you think that markets like Indonesia and Vietnam should actually command a premium because the pace at which, you know, their digitalization, the pace of technology adoption, the number of users, so where companies can actually grow to a critical mass very uh, quickly. So, and these markets actually produce massive uh, opportunities for funds to generate alpha. Um, as a supplier of um, investment of, of deal, we never ask for premium. We always ask for fair uh, valuation based on the performance, the underlying performance of the companies and then let the market decide from there on how much they want to, to value once the company gets, um, gets listed or trading in the secondary market and whatnot. Um, we can't really control that. Um, we just remain focused uh, focus on how much we pay to enter and how we deliver value, uh, how we create value in the companies. Got it. We just have a couple of minutes. I want to take one audience question. Uh, ESG is now becoming mainstream, uh, whether it's LPs, GPs, private investors, uh, unicorns, everybody is sort of uh, looking at it. Uh, how, do you, how do you see it? I completely agree that ESG is a big sector. Um, and if you're investing in develop, a large developing market in Indonesia, whereby you can create a lot of value from mass market. Your business models tend to fit into the ESG strategies. On uh, Bank Jago, uh, Jerry and you are controlling shareholders, if I'm not mistaken, and Gojek has about a 23% stake in it. So what's the road ahead here? Um, if you've been following, um, uh, Ben Yago's uh, results because it's a public company, they turn um, profitable, obviously, <clears throat> and it's still growing extremely fast. 
um, it has a um, uh, dual prong strategy. The num number one is that they want to be um, capital reliable um, and preferred capital providers for all the digital players, whether they are P2P lenders um, or any digital players that need capital. And the second, um, the second leg is being an integral, integral part of um, Gojek Tokopedia as a capital partner. Um, and they started doing that early results are very encouraging. Um, we need to move faster and execute, um, but the company is on the right track. Got it. To close, uh, let me just ask you uh, this. Uh, you're doing your fifth fund. You're among the largest funds in the region. How are you and the management team at uh, Nordstar uh, shaping the firm uh, to, to be a firm of the future? And what does a private equity firm of the future look like? Well, on the, for for our side, um, you know, uh, it's it's we have a combination of experienced um, partners who've been in the business for a long time, but at the same time, we're also recruiting um, younger uh, members of the firm, whether they come from um, Google um, or from other digital companies, and we also want to make sure that we have uh, younger people coming. Uh, we have a pretty systematic. Um, um, process of recruiting new people, uh, young young people. And you know, we work very closely as a team. Um, we work very closely with our portfolio companies and make sure that we understand the big trend um, and what's going on with their business because oftentimes um, those those create new new investing opportunities as well. And we we um, stay very close to we stay very close to the market. What works today may not work tomorrow, um, and we need to be agile. We need to, we need to, we need to be able to change. Uh, we need to be able to fix. Um, we need to keep adapting. Um, that's essentially what we do. Yeah. In thirty seconds, Patrick, your predictions for twenty twenty two, or and even the rest 20, of this year. Twenty twenty two for the markets that we are operating, primarily Indonesia. I think it's going to be a, an amazing year. Um, because if you look at where commodity prices are trading today, um, there are a lot of Indonesia's commodities are trading at high, um, at at high level, um, and I believe that they will continue to hold up. That means that on the macro side, um, Indonesia is going to be um, benefiting uh, from this trend. At the same time, the pandemic is now under control. The government has done an excellent job. Um, Jakarta has less, less uh, new cases than Singapore today. Uh, as of yesterday, the whole country has less cases than Singapore. Um, so things, things, things seem to be under control for now. Um, it may change. Um, but because of that, um, we believe that domestic consumption will, uh, will come roaring back. Um, in the past few days, um, in Jakarta, we started to have traffic jams again, uh, something that we have not experienced for a long time. So. Um, um, my view is that um, um, Indonesia will be um, flying with all cylinders on next year. Uh, so we we are very optimistic. Yeah. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us for our opening uh, fireside chat. It was uh, great to have you uh, with us again. Thank you thank so you, much to all our audience. Enjoyed the insightful discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.